Back in 2021, CATL made an announcement of a breakthrough in sodium batteries. At the time, it was thought that the mass production of these batteries would be at least 12 years away. But all that has changed as an announcement was made last week that sodium batteries are now in mass production and will soon be fitted into new energy vehicles built in China. This is not just an important step. It's the latest in a long line of what are now referred to as deep seek moments. Welcome to another of my tabletop talks. and I'm going to tell you why sodium batteries are important. Let's take a look. First of all, they have a very similar energy density weight ratio. In fact, in all the metrics that were measured, this is the only one that doesn't exceed lithium. However, the negative point is barely negative at all. Now, what does all that mean? Well, the reason why most battery technologies that would be better for the environment than lithium are not adopted is because they're either too heavy to produce the same power or too big. In the case of this newly announced sodium battery, it's almost, but not quite, almost exactly the same. Admittedly, that's slightly less efficient. It's not going to make much difference when the rest of the benefits are taken into account. Very importantly, the sodium battery has a life cycle of 10,000 charges. Now that's at least 2.5 times better than anything lithium can produce, and as much as four times better than the standard batteries available today. So your battery life in your car will be several times longer than the current batteries. That's got to be good. Another incredibly important thing for China, where northern temperatures can really screw up electric vehicles, is that the battery can operate at minus 40 degrees centigrade, meaning there's nowhere in China, not even in the far north of Heilongjiang or Inner Mongolia, where this battery can't be used. It also has a top operating temperature of 70 centigrade, which is about the temperature of coffee when we can comfortably drink it. So there's no problem anywhere in the world with that. The safety of this battery is of enormous concern. I have actually seen what's called an abuse test, where a normal battery is drilled through and it explodes, but this one can't explode, no matter what tests it's given, how much abuse you give it. So that'll be a huge selling point to overcome the fears of some people that they have about electric vehicles bursting into flames. There are, there's no need anymore for mining of lithium. That's hugely damaging to the environment. And here's a really important feature that no one is talking about yet. Desalination plants have a massive problem with something called brine. That brine usually is pumped back into the water and that causes environmental degradation, high salinity, which damages the ecosystems around a desalination plant. Now, this is one reason why we have all this water on Earth and can't utilize it fully because taking the salt out means we need to put it somewhere else. That's back into the ocean is bad, into the ground would be worse, particularly if there's farming going on. Now it can be harvested and sold as a byproduct to battery manufacturers. Of course, there are some issues with what, how to deal with this, how much there'll be, but there's no doubt those issues will be overcome. Now, another big problem that people have with electric vehicles, understandably, is the time it takes to charge. Manufacturers have worked hard to change this and battery swaps were a great way to do it. But faster charging is still a huge problem that needs to be overcome. This battery can add 520 kilometers in just five minutes. That's over 320 miles. So now it's about the same as topping off your fuel tank. The raw material cost is lower meaning that everything related to transportation and travel can decrease. I remember coming to China 20 years ago and paying 400 RMB to get a taxi from Guangzhou to Zhongshan. There were no fast trains and the buses were dirty and inconveniently placed, so getting a taxi was definitely the best way. However, in those days, the average income for people in Zhongshan was only a couple of thousand RMB. It was impossible for ordinary Chinese workers to do what I was able to do. Nowadays, the average income is about 10,000 RMB and the cost of a Didi or an Uber to go to Guangzhou is less than 200 RMB. So costs have gone down and can go further. Living expenses have gone down in a lot of cases and income has gone up many times. People ask me why I love living in China and this is one of the best reasons I can give them. Almost everything that I need to pay for now is much more convenient 
and in some cases much cheaper than it was 20 years ago. How many developed nations can say this? The source for this information about these batteries is linked in the description. Go check it all out. It is a real deep seek moment. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.